What's up? My name is Technobay here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll show you how to optimize Warzone 2.0 for the best performance possible. Though, a quick note, we'll be skipping past Windows optimization, for which you'll find a link in the description down below for both Windows 10, 11 and NVIDIA specific optimization guides to get even more out of your PC. That being said, with a brand new release, you will need to update your graphics card drivers, especially if you want better performance, so make sure your Windows and GPU drivers are up to date. Besides that, make sure you have as little running as possible in the background, unlike my current start bar, and disable any overlays you're not actively using, including Discord's overlay, any frame counters and things like that. They can all subtract from your experience, even if a little bit. Anyways, let's get straight into the actual game itself. Whether you have the game on Steam or Battle.net, there should be absolutely no difference difference. For me, I have it on Steam, so I'll go ahead and fire it up now. When we do eventually load into the game, if you see a shaders optimization in the top left, just make sure to let that run through to completion. You can change settings, just make sure to let it run through to completion before actually trying to play the game. I'll skip the intro here and head straight to the settings in the top right. We can also hit F3 to get here. Then I'll head across to graphics. Starting on the display tab, you should be playing in full screen mode, which is full screen exclusive. And if you're on Windows 11 on one of the latest updates, you can head across to system, display, then down to graphics. And at the very top, you should see a few tick boxes. Windows 11, click change default graphics settings. And in design of here, you'll see a new option called optimizations for windowed games. If you have that option available and you have it turned on, you may need to restart your PC after enabling it. You can play in borderless extended window or window windowed mode over here with practically no extra input latency, which is a great thing. Otherwise, if you're not sure, leave it on full screen exclusive and we'll continue. If you have it on full screen exclusive, you'll see a few more options are enabled here in the menu. Obviously, you'll select whatever monitor you want it to be on, select whatever graphics card, and right below it will have three options. Refresh rate, you can usually leave it auto, though it should match your monitor's refresh rate, whether it's 60, 144, 240, etc. Display resolution should match your display once more, or at least be a compatible resolution. If you have a 4K monitor, set it to 4K. This is the last thing you should be lowering. Even though it can gain you quite a bit of extra FPS, it is something that can cause the game to be very blurry very quickly, especially when you're not just dividing the main resolution by two, for example. In other words, you're not jumping from 4K to 1080p. You're going to, say, 2K. Things can get very blurry on a 4K screen at 2K. Anyways, dynamic resolution should absolutely be turned off. And if you choose to use DLSS, XESS, or FSR, this will be turned off by default anyways. Scrolling down, aspect ratio, set this to whatever you want. VSync should be off. VSync menus, you can have it on if you wish. You'll only ever need to enable VSync if you're getting screen tearing. This will definitely raise your input latency by quite a bit, but it can save you from a massive headache if your screen is tearing. Custom frame rate limit, set this to custom. And underneath, I usually set the gameplay to the max that it can go, menu to 60 and out of focus to 5. This last one meaning when you tab out, your browsers and things like that won't lag because your game's eating 300 FPS on the main menu. If you're trying to record or stream and your OBS or whatever it is is saying encoder overloaded, what you can do is drop the FPS here to just below the FPS you're getting. Say you're getting 100 FPS in game. Set this to 90 and by doing so, you'll save some extra graphics power for OBS and other recording software to work and encode if you're hitting any issues like that. I leave this at the default of 250. I don't think I reach that FPS. Do whatever you want here. Right below this, we'll skip through these next two options here. Display gamma should match your monitor. In most cases, it'll be 2.2 sRGB. Brightness is your preference. If you click this, it'll take you across to this guide here. You'll want to not push this too high. Otherwise, if you do, everything will become super washed out and white. It's a classic Call of Duty look, but it can definitely get too much too quickly. Constrain mouse to game window. If you find yourself clicking out when you're flick shotting and things like that to your other monitors, simply turn this on. Focus mode will blank out your other screens. Obviously, you won't want to use this. Instead, just don't look at your other screens or turn them off completely. You don't need to draw over them for any other reason. It can especially cause havoc on multi-GPU systems where you have different GPUs feeding your side monitors. Finally, HDR is your preference. It shouldn't have too much of an impact on FPS. Let's go across to the quality tab at the very top. Quality presets, I'll leave it custom, and right below it, render resolution. Set this to 100% and we'll move on. This is what you'll be lowering if you'd like to lower your resolution as it will result in a less blurry look than lowering it on the display tab. So if you need to change your resolution when you're done with this guide and you need even more, do that here. Upscaling and sharpening. This is important, especially if you have a modern-ish graphics card. 
Anyone with an NVIDIA 20 series plus graphics card can use NVIDIA DLSS or NVIDIA DLAA. NVIDIA NIS can be used by any NVIDIA graphics card, Intel XESS by any Intel graphics card, or at least of their newer Arc series, and AMD FSR can be used by anyone. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, select NVIDIA DLSS. If you have an AMD graphics card or anything else, select AMD FSR. When you do so, you'll see more options in the show more section here. All you'll want to do is look at the list of presets here. The lower down on the list you are, the further to quality versus performance, the fewer FPS you'll stand to gain. So quality, you'll have minimal visual impact and a slight gain in FPS. Ultra performance, you'll notice a lot of artifacting and weird things left over on your screen, especially when you're looking around quickly, but you'll gain a massive amount of FPS as well. Essentially, your game renders at a smaller resolution and blows it up bigger using magic. Then sharpness right below this, obviously set this to your preference, usually around 70 to 80 is fine on NVIDIA. For AMD FSR, once again you have similar options, we can choose a quality preset here. Again, the higher up on the list, the more FPS you stand to gain, though the more artifacts you'll see. DLAA is only anti-aliasing and it's not upscaling, so you won't gain any FPS from that, though you may get smoother edges at less of a performance cost than other anti-aliasing options below this. If you have NVIDIA DLSS, DLAA, or Intel XESS selected, you won't be able to play around with the anti-aliasing and anti-aliasing qualities here. If you can, drop the anti-aliasing to SMAA and the anti-aliasing quality down to low. The higher this is, the fewer F the more FPS you'll stand to lose, though the smoother jagged edges will be. I don't mind them, and especially because I'm using DLSS, these options are grayed out anyways. Video memory scale, usually I think this is set to 80 by default, that's fine, leave it there, otherwise crank it up to 90, which is the highest this can go. If you have more VRAM available, then it's actually being used by the game. You can see here, the game is using 4.7 gigs, other apps around 3 gigs, and there's still tons of VRAM left on my 3080 Ti. But for you, you may want to set this to 80 or even 70, and leave it there. This is all up to you and how much VRAM you have on your graphics card. So lower end, you'll want to lower this to 60 or 50. Higher end with lots available, you can crank it up to 90 or 80 and forget about it. Then details and textures. While these are all your preference, ultimately, there's a few of these that you can gain extra FPS from. Texture resolution should have a small impact on your FPS, but only if you have enough VRAM available. When we play around with this option, you'll see the slider in the bottom left move, even if we don't change them. Very low, we'll use two gigs of VRAM, high will use almost 5. You'll need to match your graphics card. If you have tons available, you can max this out and forget about it with minimal FPS impact. And in Warzone, these options may not be completely true. You may want to stick around to normal or lower it to just one notch from what you usually play multiplayer on if you're playing Warzone. Texture filtering and isotropic, this has a very minimal impact both visually and on your PC. You can see around the truck tires here, it's a bit more blurry at lower settings than at higher settings, so depending on what you feel like, you can set this on low or high. Again, there's a small impact on FPS, so lowering this technically may gain you something, but it may not on your PC. Nearby LOD, distant LOD, these are two options that will definitely differ depending on what maps you're playing. Warzone being a far distance should tell you that everything further than your close field view should be set to a lower level of detail. That way, objects and things in the distance are loaded at a lower resolution, so it doesn't cause any stuttering when you're running into a big monument and things like that. So set distant LOD to low, and nearby LOD you can leave it either high or low depending on your system. For me, I'll just leave it at high here. Then clutter draw distance. This has to do with small ground elements like foliage, rocks, and various decals. Set this to short, just so you can see a little bit better in the distance. I'm pretty sure that they've already thought about this and do their best to mitigate this. I know in PUBG, at least, if you lowered your draw distance, you'd hide grass and even buildings, allowing you pretty much wall hacks. Leaving this on short is fine. We don't really care about grass. Particle quality, usually you'll set this to low and forget about it. Particle quality level, once again low, or very low depending on your PC. Bullet impacts and spray, this has a very low impact on your PC, though it can have a huge visual impact in your gameplay experience. Seeing bullet holes and things are really nice, so simply have this on if you like it, off if you don't. Shader quality, this has a larger impact on your GPU, usually you'll want to set this to medium or low. 
If you have a higher end graphics card, you can leave it on medium or high. Tessellation has a relatively large impact on VRAM and GPU, and it basically affects how geometry is rendered. If you don't see a difference between these two images here on the left, the left one being off and the right one being all, I'm pretty sure, set this to off and move on. Terrain memory, this has to do with distant terrain textures. Once again, because we're on rather large maps, you may want to set this to min and move on. On demand texture streaming, I'd recommend having this turned off. Otherwise, if you enable this, your game will eat up extra storage on your PC. It'll affect your download speed. And of course, while it downloads and loads new textures while you're playing the game, it could cause stuttering and things like that. Usually people say keep this off, and I tend to agree with them. You can customize some options down below it as well if you so please. Streaming quality, once again, if you have this off, you don't really need to worry about this. However, you can set this to low and forget about it. Volumetric quality, this has to do with volumetric lighting. It allows you to see these god rays and things like that a bit clearer. It can really impact visuals in the gameplay. However, if you're not really there to stare at the scenery, you can set this to low and forget about it. Deferred physics quality, this has to do with the physics quality of the water. And of course, you can set this to low or off, depending on what you want. The lower this is, the more FPS you stand to gain when you're around water. Once again, to do with water, water caustics has to do with lighting at the bottom of the ocean if you set this to off you may notice a rather large effect to how water looks in game if you don't like this turn it back on then shadow and lighting shadow map resolution set this to low and forget about it we're not going to be staring at shadows while we're playing an fps screen space shadows once again we can lower this though it should have a very low impact on fps but it might have a large impact on how the game looks set this to low or off spot shadow quality once again i'll set this to low spot cache we'll leave it low especially if you're struggling for vram even though it does only take a small amount of VRAM. Here they only say about 16 megs difference, so I'm pretty sure on large warzone maps this will have a larger impact. Particle lighting, this has to do with how lighting happens around explosions and things like that. Because you'll more than likely be in combat when these things happen, you'll probably want to set this down to low to minimize FPS drops while in combat. Ambient occlusion, once again this has to do with lighting and shadows. You can see it mostly around the back of the fork left here, left being low, right being high. For me, I'll usually set this to static objects, so only things that aren't moving have this fancy lighting effect. Otherwise, you can set this to off if you couldn't really care less. Maybe you may even stand to gain some vision because certain objects and people and hiding places won't be so much in the shadows. Then if you have this on, you can change the quality. You can set this to low or higher, and this will usually affect your PC when you're running towards new areas on the map. So you may want to set this to low. Screen space reflections. This is a very old technique and usually very cheap. You can leave this on normal. You don't have to turn it off. You won't gain it too many FPS. Static reflection quality, I would recommend leaving this at low, especially if you're struggling for VRAM. Finally, weather grid volumes, I'm not entirely sure what this does, sets the quality of the weather effects applied to the dynamic objects, probably want to set this to low. If they don't have a picture comparing things, it's probably not too big of an issue. Finally, post processing effects, NVIDIA Reflex, low latency should be on. If you're CPU bound, you should set this to on plus boost. Depth of field, world motion blur, weapon motion blur, I would all recommend having these set to off unless you like this blurry experience. World motion blur especially and depth of field will affect you seeing distant enemies and things like that, so turn them off absolutely. If you like your view model being blurry when you look around, you can have weapon motion blur turned on. Finally, film grain, set this to zero and you can see things a bit better. Now we can apply the settings and finally move across to the view tab. Field of view, don't care about what anyone says, whether this has to do with FPS or whatever, set this to what you're comfortable and best at playing with. I'll usually set this to around 100 and forget about it. ADS field of view, this is your preference. If you have this set to independent, when you scope in, your field of view won't change and you won't zoom in. If you like having it zoom in a little bit when you scope in, set this to affected. However, if you do have this on, you may notice a small FPS drop when you do so. Weapon field of view, this is your preference and it effectively moves it closer or further out. Third person field of view, once again your preference, vehicle field of view, again. Besides that, we're pretty much done here. On the audio tab, you'll want to play around with audio mix to get the best sound for your speaker slash headset setup. If you like bass, set it to bass boost, otherwise headphones is usually good enough, and home theater for normal speakers. Pretty simple. I usually lower music and dialogue just to hear a bit better in game, and maybe the hit marker noise if you find it too sharp or annoying for you. Mono audio, you definitely won't want to have this on. If you do, turn it off, and everything else is your preference. If you don't like hearing enemies, or you happen to hear profanities quite often, when you game end them, you can turn it off here as last words voice chat.
proximity voice chat allows you to talk to nearby players and hear the communications as well. Though, if you do have any of these on, you'll want to set your voice chat recording mode to push to talk. Besides that, we're now done. That's really about it. At this point, you can hop into game and see the kind of effects that you're getting. If you'd like to get extra FPS, the things I'd recommend you change are in your graphics, then quality, you'll want to play around with the DLSS, FSR or XESS preset and simply make this a faster option for more FPS. Otherwise, if you don't have that available, try messing around with the render resolution up here and lower that as well. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. So thank you all for watching. My name has been Techno Behavior Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.